Hey guys, it's Deborah. So today I want to do a little quick Bible study with you guys on 2 Thessalonians, um, where it talks about, where Paul talks about not worrying about that you've missed the, the rapture, the gathering together, and the day of the Lord. He talks to the Thessalonians and calms them down and said, like, I want to tell you, don't worry, you haven't missed the gathering together and the day of the Lord. And so I want to go over that with you because it can be really difficult to understand. Um, some of it can be difficult for newer believers, but also for people who've read it like a million times because it kind of says things where it's saying, you know, this has to happen first, but then don't worry, that will happen first. And that's going to happen before this is going to happen. And this is quite a few things and it can seem a little confusing. So I prayed on it and I just know I should share this with you. And I kind of like worded it out. So it's a lot easier. So I'm going to read the King James version of second Thessalonians, um, Second Thessalonians chapter two and the beginning of it. And I'll just read it straight up in the King James version. And then I'm going to go over after and show you and explain to you um, what it actually means kind of in layman's terms and my interpretation of it through prayer and everything and study, deep, deep study. Um, and I went through the strongest and exhaustive concordance to basically get those original Greek words and try to replace them with words that we're familiar with to help you to see what needs to come first before the gathering together, the harpazo, or before the second coming of the Lord. So you know, okay, these things need to happen and then these other things can happen and this is the order that it happens in. So let's get into it. I'm just going to read 2 Thessalonians from the King James Version and then I will get into um, kind of like uh, dissecting it and I guess going over it in a Bible study form. Okay, so let's read. So let me read here 2 Thessalonians 2. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us, that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall, come, shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed." the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth, exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things, and now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work, only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Um, so, yes, I think that's where we're going to end. Um, as you see, I read it and uh, it could leave you saying, huh, what? It's very twisty, I will say, because it's like, this has to happen, but this has to happen first. But remember, I told you, this won't happen until that happens. And it can feel like it contradicts itself, and it can feel like it's kind of twisted. Tw not, that sounds bad, twisting. Like, um, I don't know how to really say it. Not twisting, but just, it's kind of all over the place when it comes to the wording, but it's perfect and it's fine and it's great. It's just, it can feel that way. When I first read it, I was like, okay, okay, so this has to happen first. No, wait, that has to happen first. It says, this will not come except there's a falling away first. But wait a minute, it says, remember not when I was with you, I told you, you know what withholds? It's the mystery. And then the wicked one will be, like when you read it, it's kind of like, wait, does that happen first? Does this happen first? So we're gonna break it down using the Strong's Exhaustive Concordance to help us out. And we're going to get this mystery solved. Okay, so in my notes a section of my phone, I kind of just rewrote out 2 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians 2 for you guys and inserted certain words, like changed them. Um, I'm not trying to add or take away from the Bible, but I'm just trying to help explain so that it doesn't seem so um, confusing, I guess you could say. Um, so what it says is fine. It's just, it can seem sometimes like, like I said before, you know, this thing has to happen before that thing, but that thing can't happen until this thing. And you're kind of like, wait, what did it say that? Or did it say that? So I'm going to read it to you in a way that I feel hopefully it is, you know, directed of the Lord. And I use the Strong's Exhaustive Concordance, which has its own errors as well, but 
I use that mixed with kind of like other things to kind of get to the point that I'm at to just relay this to you guys. So if you can read Greek, then you'd be in a good place if or ancient Greek, probably, because then you could uh, it would just seem a lot more clear. But because we most of us don't, um, I did it this way. So I'm going to read it to you guys and hopefully you'll understand the second Thessalonians better. So let's read it. Now we beseech you, brethren, about the second coming of Jesus Christ and the harpazo. So if you notice, the original version is going to say something different. In the King James, it says, now we beseech you, brethren, about, I believe it says, the day of the Lord and our gathering together. So see how he says end? If the day of the Lord and the gathering together is the same day, I'm pretty sure he there would be no reason to say it. He just say about the day of the Lord or about our gathering together. Um, I've, I'm there, I've gone into it like a billion times about, you know, pre-tribulation rapture, the great multitude, all these different things. So we're not even going to go there for post trivers Like this is probably not even for you, but hopefully you learn something anyway. But, um, let's just read it and hopefully this will make sense. So now we beseech you brethren about the second coming of Jesus Christ and the harpazo that ye not soon be shaken in mind or troubled neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us that the second coming is presently soon at hand. He's like, don't be worried. It's not soon at hand at his time. Let no man deceive you by any means for the second coming. The reason I have to keep writing this, because if I say the rapture or the gathering together or the harpazo, because he keeps using the day of the Lord here, he doesn't say our gathering together. He's talking about the, the day of the Lord, which would be the second coming, how I interpret it. So it's important that I say this because it helps you to know what needs to come first. Let no man deceive you by any means for the second coming of Christ shall not come except there come. Now he says a falling away first. I inserted here a harpazo, a physical departure, possibly, or a spiritual departure. We're going to get into that in more detail. So what he's saying is before the day of the Lord, either a physical or a spiritual departure has to happen first. Let's keep going on because we'll come back to that. And the Antichrist be revealed, the son of perdition. So that has to happen before the second coming, not before the rapture. The Antichrist has to be revealed before the second coming, the day of the Lord. The son of perdition who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worship. So that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. And now ye know what withholdeth that the Antichrist be revealed. So he's going to tell you now. He's going to say, now you're going to know what's holding back that man from being revealed. It's going to be a physical and or a spiritual departure. A falling away has to happen for this guy to be revealed. That he might be revealed in his time. For the Antichrist spirit is already at work. Only the restrainer will restrain. Now I change that word. It says only he who now letteth will let. That's very deep. When you go into um, Strong's Exhaustive Concordance, it doesn't even say only he who le will letteth will let. I had to do a lot of digging and other things, but it ended. It ends up coming to the terms of only something restraining will restrain until it is taken out of the midst until he is finished and taken out of the midst. I've done so much digging to understand and to really dig deep into the Greek. And this is the wording that I come up with for the Antichrist spirit is already at work. Only the restrainer will restrain. And it actually is that word for restrain and restrainer until he's finished and taken out of the midst. So the words, if you go into the Strongest of Kunahorns, it will not say only he who now letteth will let until he's taken out of the way. It's nothing like that. Now, I don't say you have to go into that, but all I'm trying to do is get to the bottom of the truth of the matter. And trust me, I went through it with a fine tooth comb and this wording fits th the best when it comes to the original Greek. And then the ant, and now you can say, who's the restrainer? We can get into that after, um, but let's just read through this and read through my notes and then we can come back to things. And then the Antichrist will be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy it with the brightness of his coming. So here I wrote some notes. What do we know? Paul is speaking of two things, the day of the Lord, the second coming, and our gathering together, Harpazo. He specifically mentions two separate events. Before the second coming, the Antichrist must be revealed and sit in the temple, not before the gathering together, but before the day of the Lord. Before the second coming, there must be a spiritual and or physical departure, an apostia, <laughs> apostasia, and I will get into which one it is. So that has to happen before the second coming, not before the gathering together, because that wouldn't even make sense. Because if you're taught, because imagine he said before the harpazo gathering together, there must be, oh, I have a child trying to open my door here. I've hidden myself in the bedroom. I had a little interruption there, so I got a little bit sidetracked. Hopefully I'm 
coming back to you from that same place, but before the second coming, it would make no sense if it said before the rapture, there must be a, a departure or another fall, uh, um, an apostasia, which means a departure in that if that means a rapture, how could it say before the gathering together, there must be a rap must be a rapture. That wouldn't make any sense. This makes a lot of sense to say before the second coming, because he said the day of the Lord, there must be a, now we'll get into the bottom of which kind of departure, but let's just say a physical departure, which would be the Harpazo. That would make sense. So before the second coming, before the Antichrist is revealed, he who restrains must be finished and taken out of the midst. That pairs well with a physical departure. So it makes more sense that way than, okay, there's just gonna be a falling away. Like a lot of people aren't gonna believe in the faith anymore. So um, yeah, I said again, it's very tricky if you go into that verse when it says he who restrains uh, he who letteth will now let. If you go into the Strong's Concordance, it's absolutely hard to understand. But I had to go dig deeper and I found out the word restrains is the word I'm looking at and taken out of the midst, which still all fits right. He's taken out of the way. So let's keep going. What does Paul not say? Paul doesn't say that the Antichrist must be revealed before the departure or harpazo. He does not say that. He must be revealed only before the second coming, and he will sit in the temple declaring himself as God. Here's the conclusion. Three events must happen in this order. One, a departure, whether it be spiritual or physical, that must happen first. Two, a restrainer is removed to allow the Antichrist to be revealed. These are the steps that have to happen. Three, the Antichrist will be revealed and he will sit in the temple. So first, there's some sort of departure, a restrainer is removed from the midst, and then you have the Antichrist sitting in the temple and re being revealed as who he is. And then fourth, the last thing is the second coming, the day of the Lord. Okay, so here's the word that I said I'd come back and talk about, a falling away, apostasia. We know that there's an order of events that have to take place. Um, as I said in my conclusion, that first there has to be a, a falling away, then there has to be the restrainer removed from the midst, and then the Antichrist will be revealed, and then you have the second coming. What is this falling away? Is it just a falling away from the faith, like many have taught, like just, oh, young Christians have left the church, or whatever you want to say? Or is it something different? So this is the word at hand, apostasia, 646, um, and it means, it says here, a defection, apostasy, a revolt. So basically... Strong's is, is basically saying like, oh, it's a bunch of people are leaving the church. It's a revolt. Okay. So here's the thing. Strong's concordance has errors. I, okay. It has errors. I know it does. Trust me. It does. Um, I've, I've had to, the Lord's had to bring me to this place, not to depend on strong so much. I think God can work through numbers. And I think this exhaustive concordance was made for a good reason, but people were depending on it in a very weird way. And I think it just needs to be used for what it is. The Bible is the only thing that is infallible and um, basically has no errors. Strong's does. It was made by a man. <laughs> so here you see here, it's basically sounding like a falling away from the faith. But you can see a little bit lower that it's derived from two words, apo and stasis. Well, actually here, it doesn't say stasis. Hold on. It says apo and um histomy histomy stand okay so i'm going to read you something that actually says it's from apo and stasis which sounds more plausible because apostasia um but i yeah so let me read that thing so like i said we're going to take it all with a grain of salt so this is the word and in some ways you're thinking okay it, it says in a de desertion or it sounds like leaving from previous standing i mean it just kind of sounds like okay this person these people have just first what has to happen is people leaving like the church buildings or something like that so let me read this article and i'll give you a better understanding of what i believe the word apostasia means in the ancient greek but before i do that let me just show you a quick picture so as you see, this word is 646. This is the word, apostasia. As I'm talking at this very moment, I am I just took a picture of my um, dresser and look at the time. I'm recording this video at 646. I kid you not. I can't even make that up. I'm recording this video at 646 and I'm talking about let, uh, word 646. That's the kind of stuff where you're just like, okay, what? <laughs> but anyway, I kid you not. I kid you not. This is for real. This is, yeah. Anyway, okay, so let me read the article right now about the word apostasia. 
Let's read a minute here from this article from the Institute of Creation, Creation Research. The Falling Away, 2 Thessalonians 2, 3. The Falling Away Greek apostasia has commonly been translated as the apostasy. The def definite article in the Greek indicates Paul had already told them about it and then assumed to apply to the final great religious apostasy at the end of the age. The context, however, as well as the etymol etymol etymology of the word itself makes this interpretation unlikely. In the priest, in the in this precise form, it is used nowhere else in the New Testament, so its meaning must be defined by its context here. It is derived from two Greek words, apo, meaning away from, and stasis, meaning standing. It thus could properly be rendering standing away instead of falling away. In Paul's previous letter, he had made no reference whatsoever to a coming departure from the faith, but he had discussed in length a coming departure from the earth by all believers. When Christ returns to meet them in the air, 1 Thessalonians 4, 13, 18. Thus, the standing away from in context seems to refer to all the raptured believers standing away from the earth as they stand before the returning Lord when they meet him in the air in the heavens. Paul here is simply reminding them that the sudden destruction that would come upon believers when the day of the Lord begins could not happen until the rapture, the standing away from the earth before Christ. Okay, so let's just go back here. Let's just, this is this person's interpretation partially, but I just want to read the the info, the real hardcore info. It says here, it is derived from two Greek words. Let's put this at the top. Apo, meaning away from, and stasis, meaning standing. It thus could properly rendering standing away instead of falling away. In Paul's previous letter, he made no reference. So basically, Paul was talking about the gathering together. Remember, he was just in uh, 1 Thessalonians 4, but he wasn't talking about people falling away from their faith. So it just makes more sense that he's reminding them of something that he just talked about. So personally, I lean towards it means a departure. I've heard other people say they've discussed this with Greek people and it more means that. So um, it kind of leans toward Paul is trying to say a falling away has to come first as in departure more than it means they're going to leave their faith. Um, now, it's so funny because I was supposed to make this video. I kept feeling like I was supposed to make this video explaining Second Thessalonians. And then my friend, my neighbor, actually texted me something that was with regards to actually people falling away in the end times and talking about that that will be a sign of the end. And it's so funny she sent that to me because I was thinking, um, because it actually supports what I'm saying here, that this word 646 apostasia is actually more about a departure than it is a falling away from the faith. Um, and that being said, I'm just going to read you the little verse that she sent me. She sent it for other reasons, and that's going to be my next video most likely. But let me just read the verse here, or the, yeah, the verses that she sent me. So she sent me these verses for another reason, but let me just read it because it really made me, it pushed me to make this video. So 1 Timothy 4, 1 to 6. Now the Spirit expressly says that in latter times, some will depart from the faith by devoting themselves to deceitful spirits and teaching teachings of demons. So he goes into that people are going to depart from the faith in the latter days. So this is clear. He's not talking about a rapture here. He's not talking about a harpazo. He is saying people are going to depart from this faith because it says they're going to devote themselves to deceitful spirits through insincerity, liars, the con their consciousness will be seared. They forbid marriages. They they're basically doing bad things. So this word should be apostasia. Now the spirit expressly says that in latter times there will be an apostasia from the faith. That would make sense to me because inevitably he's saying there'll be a falling away, a departure from the faith. And you clearly see this is not a rapture. That other verse sounds like it could be, but this is not. So this is the word in 2 Timothy that I just read. It, the word is aphistemi, aphistemi or whatever. So basically it means to remove. It's not apostasia. So some will depart from the face. This is um, to make standoff, cause to withdraw, remove, to excite, to revolt, to stand off, to stand aloof. Oh, I have people screaming in the background. To go away, to depart from anyone to desert, to withdraw. Okay, so basically you'd think he'd be saying, because he's clearly talking about a departure from the faith in the latter days, not a, you know, when, well, you'd clearly think he's talking about the word apostasia, in my opinion. The verse. Now he's using a different word. Could just be coincidence that he just, there's many words for falling away or departing. Personally, I found it interesting that I had put in my notes in my phone all this whole thing, this whole video that I wanted to explain to you guys, and I felt like I was really supposed to explain it, and then she messaged me, texted me this whole thing, and it just all the more added to what I was trying to say. So 
I really do feel like that is that was meant to be that I was to that she was sending me this and to show me that in the latter days people will fall away, come away, depart, whatever you want to say. And then that word is a total different word. And I did show you in the article that they were saying that the way the context of apostasia has not been put in other parts of the Bible, the apo and stasis, that whole thing. So basically, it sounds like something different. So why didn't Paul say there has to come a um, before the day of the Lord, there has to come our gathering together first. I don't know. And that's why I can't be a hundred percent. If he's talking about a falling away from the faith or a departure, a gathering together in the air. So that being said, that part can be up for debate, but I just wanted to lay this out for you guys. Um, but what we do know is he is talking about two different events. He said, our, the day of the Lord and our gathering together. And when he says that he goes into detail, what has to happen before the day of the Lord. He never once says, let me tell you what has to happen before the gathering together. He never says that. So hopefully you got something out of this and it helped you to kind of unscramble some of that. So even if you don't want to believe apostasia means a departure, you still know that it does not say the Antichrist has to be revealed before our gathering together. I truly believe it seems that these are two separate events, the gathering together and the day of the Lord and how he breaks them up. And then he consistently says this has to happen before the day of the Lord. This has to happen before the day of the Lord, not our gathering together. And in addition, he previously was just talking about basically us meeting the Lord in the air. And he said, remember, I already told you this. So he's been talking about the meeting of the Lord in the air. He hasn't been talking about a falling away from the faith like in Timothy. Timothy is specifically about people leaving and doing weird, strange things and completely not good things. So yeah, that was kind of funny though. I recorded this at 646. Come on, you guys, that's funny. This is kind of all around this whole apostasia, which could literally mean the rapture. And here I record it at 646. And it's so funny. Look at my girly dresser. <laughs> it's so girly. I repainted my dresser. I finished. I did use chalk paint. I refinished it. Like I like um, made it look old on the corners. I put new knobs on that are super girly. I'm only thinking it's funny because my eldest daughter, she's like, why do you have this in your room? That's so unfair to daddy. This looks so girly. And I go to my son. I'm like, is this okay? He's like, it's fine. And I have this letter D and it's like from Michael's and it's all gold and girly. I have, you know, everything is just so girly. So, but I think it's cute. And so anyway, I had, I didn't have this D up for so long because of how girly it was. And my daughter's like, this is just wrong. You need to like not do this. And I changed the doorknobs and everything, but come on guys. I'm talking about apostasia, possibly the rapture. And I filmed this thing at 6.46 PM. I did not realize, trust me, until I popped that um, Strong's verse on the screen. I didn't even know what time it was. I had no idea. And then I look, okay, so that's just... I don't even know what to say. But anyway, let's just leave it at that. I hope it blessed you guys. I hope it was interesting. And um, yeah, I hope, you know, you were able to unscramble some of the things if they were confusing to you. And yeah, pray on that and also read it over yourself. You know, do some digging if you're like, well, I don't know about that. Just do some digging. And um, yeah, just reread it over. I'm not trying to rewrite the Bible. Um, I just wanted to write it out in a way that seemed a little bit more, you know, um, easy to understand for our day and age, less King Jamesy. <laughs> so anyway, I hope that was fun for you guys and I will get to my next video soon because like I said, the verse that uh, my friend sent me basically is kind of the part of either not, if not the next video, but the video after that, that I want to get out. Like, I don't know why the Lord has been pouring. Well, I sh I've asked for more of the spirit. I shouldn't say I don't know why I asked for more of the spirit. And now it's like, I'm making, like, I, I have lists of videos, literally lists. So, you know, ask of, for the more of the Holy Spirit. Cause he says he will always give more of that. There's a verse that says, if you ask like for him, you know, it says like you're e we're evil and we give good gifts to our children. How much more of, of the Holy Spirit will God give for those who ask? So if you ask, you'll get the Holy Spirit more and more. So yeah, let's um, reconvene soon on the next video with regards to Second Timothy and a couple other things. So yeah, hope that blessed you guys and I'll talk to you again soon. God bless and shalom.